Hi, this is Wendy Lightheart, and in this lesson we're going to be looking at the slope of a line. The slope of a line is the rate at which the y values change for each unit of change in the x values as we move from left to right. Now that's kind of a mouthful and that may be a little confusing, so let's think of it another way. Slope is often thought of as rise over run. So if you look at this line here to the right, and let's say we plot a point on that line, and notice that as we move three units down and then two units to the right, we land back on the line again. So we, we end up at another point, which is also on the line. Now if I do this again, I go down three from that second point and right two units, I end up on the line again. And I can do it another time and yet another time. And I could keep doing this forever. So as I go from one point to another on the line, if I go down three and right two, I end up at another point on the line. And so this is what the rise of a run is all about. So as we go up or down, that's the rise and as we go left or right, that is the run. So for this particular line, the rise means that we're going down three. And the run part is that we're going right two units. So then, how do we translate this into a value that we call slope? Well, for the rise, this is going up or down, which is the change in the y values. And so if we were to go up, that would be a positive number. And if we go down, that would be a negative number. And the run has to do with going left or right. So left is negative, right is positive. So down three would become a negative three, and right two would be positive two. So the slope of this line is negative three halves. So let's look at four different um, kinds of slope that a line could have. So first of all, a line could have positive slope, like this line here. Now one way to um, recognize that you have a line with positive slope is to imagine you have a little man who is standing on the left side of the line and he wants to walk along the line and he's going to move from left to right. So notice as he moves from left to right, walking along the line, he's walking uphill. So let's see that again. He's walking along the line, again moving from left to right, and as he walks along the line, he's going uphill. So if this man that you're imagining walking le from left to right along the line is walking uphill, then that means the line has a positive slope. Now here's a line that has negative slope. So again, think of a little man standing on the left end of the line and he's going to walk along the line, moving from left to right. So if he's moving from left to right along the line, notice that this time he's walking downhill. So if the little man is walking downhill as we move from left to right, that line has a negative slope. Okay, here's a line that has zero slope. Well, if we imagine a little man on the left end of the line and he's moving left to right, well, it's like he's just walking on a flat surface. He's not walking uphill, he's not walking downhill. He's just walking on a flat surface. So if the man is walking on a flat surface, we say that that line has a, a slope of zero or zero slope. Now a line that has undefined slope is a line that goes straight up and down, a vertical line. So it's kind of difficult to, to think about this the same way because we can't put the man on the left end of the line because the line's going straight up and down, so there is no left end of the line. So I like to imagine this as this man, he's hanging on to this line, he's hanging on for dear life like it's a rope because he can't walk on the line, right? He can't walk on the line like our other three examples because the line's going straight up and down. 
And so if you imagine the man on the line and he is not able to walk because it's going up straight up and down, then that's a line with undefined slope. Okay, so now let's look at slope in a different way. This time we're going to look at the formula that we can use to find the slope of a line through two points if we're given the coordinates of those points. So we're going to um, look at the picture, look at the graph of the line, so you can kind of see what's going on. But usually we use this formula when we don't have the graph of the line, we're just simply given the coordinates of the points. So remember that we we think of slope as rise over run. So the rise is really the difference in the y coordinates of those two points. And the run is the difference of the x coordinates of those two points. And so we end up finding the rise by um, finding the difference between y2 and y1. Now these little numbers, the 2's and the 1's, those are called subscripts. They're not exponents. Notice they're written lower, not upper um, in the upper end like an exponent would be. So we're not squaring numbers or raising any numbers to um, an exponent of 1. We're simply using these subscripts as labels to say that the first point we're going to call x sub 1 and y sub 1 and the second point we're going to call x sub 2 and y sub 2. So it just helps us to keep track of, you know, wh where did this x, co x coordinate come from? Did it co come from point 1 or point 2? So anyway, we find those x coordinates and we figure out which one's going to be x1, y1, which point we're going to call x2, y2, and then we simply plug the coordinates into this formula and that will give us the slope. So let's look at an example. Let's find the slope of the line passing through the points negative 2, 5, and 4, 8. So we start by labeling these points. We're going to call one of these points, or wait, here's our formula. We're going to need that. So notice we're going to need to know what the x1 and the x2 and the y1 and the y2 are. So we can do that by labeling our points. So we'll, we'll call this first point x1, y1 and the second point is x2, y2. Now the order that you label these points doesn't really matter. You could, you could say the first one is x2, y2 and the second one is x1, y1. Just make sure you keep the subscripts with the same point um, and then make sure you plug everything into the right places into the formula. So now that we've labeled our points, we plug them into the formula. So the y2, so looking at the top first, the y2 is 8 and then we subtract and then we plug in y1 which is 5. Then in the denominator we have x2 first which is 4 and then we subtract the x1 which is negative 2. Now it's really important to remember that the subtraction signs here in the top and the bottom are part of the formula. They have nothing to do with the coordinates themselves they're in addition to any negative signs that might be on the coordinates. So that's why in the denominator we have 4 minus negative 2 instead of just 4 minus 2. So be careful of that. So now we simplify. So 8 minus 5 is 3 and 4 minus negative 2 is 6 and then this fraction 3 6 will can be reduced to 1 half and it's really important that you always reduce these fractions when you're finding the slope of a line. Okay, let's look at another example. Here we're going to find the slope of the line passing through the points 4, negative 3 and 6, 4. So here's our formula again and we're going to label our points. Let's say this first point is x1, y1 and the second point we're going to label x2, y2. So we plug our numbers into the formula. So in the numerator we have y2 which is 4 minus y1 which is negative 3. And then in the denominator we have x2 which is 6 minus x1 which is 4. So now we perform the subtractions and we have 7 on the top and 2 in the denominator. Now although this is an improper fraction, you might be tempted to convert this to a mixed number or even a decimal, but we always keep our slope in fraction form. So 
if it can be reduced, then you definitely need to reduce. But if it's an improper fraction, just keep it as an improper fraction. And that way we can see the rise over the run. So keep it in fraction form, just make sure it's reduced. Okay, let's look at another example where we're going to find the slope of the line passing through the points 5, 10, and 5, negative 2. So here's our formula once again. And we're going to label our points as x1, y1, and x2, y2. And then we plug the numbers in. So we have negative 2 minus 10 as the y2 minus y1 in the numerator. And then in the bottom we have x2 minus x1, which ends up being 5 minus 5. So notice we end up with negative 12 over 0. So remember that if you have a 0 in the denominator, then that fraction is undefined. So this is undefined, which means the line is passing through um, these two points is a vertical line. It's going straight up and down. Remember the guy hanging for dear life on the rope. It's a vertical line. Okay, so now let's talk about slope and parallel lines. So first of all, all vertical lines have undefined slope. We've talked about that. And it's also true that they're all parallel to each other. So if you have two lines that are vertical, then we know that they're parallel to each other. And also if you find the uh, slope of two lines and it, they both end up being undefined, that means they're both vertical lines and they're parallel to each other. Similarly, all horizontal lines have the same slope of zero and they are all parallel to each other. Then if we have lines that are neither vertical or horizontal, if they're slanted, but they have the same slope, then they're parallel to each other. So two lines that have the same slope will be parallel to each other, so they'll never cross. So let's determine whether these two lines are parallel. So we're going to call this first line L1. This line passes through the points 7, negative 1, and 9, 3. And then line 2 we'll call L2 passes through the points 5, 6, and 4, 4. So in order to determine whether or not they're parallel, we simply just simply need to compare their slopes. So let's find the slope of each of these lines. So for our first line, we'll plug in our coordinates. So we have our y2, which is 3, minus our y1, which is negative 1. So difference of the y's on top. And then 9 minus 7 would be the differences of the x's on top. And then we simplify. So 3 minus negative 1 is 4. 9 minus 7 is 2. And we reduce that to 2. Now, the only time you will not keep your slope in fraction form is when it's a whole number. So we'll just simplify that to 2. Now our other line, we plug in those coordinates into our formula and then simplify, do the subtraction. And negative 2 over negative 1 would be a positive 2. So here we have two lines that have the same slope, therefore these two lines are parallel. Now let's talk about slope and perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines um, intersect each other at a 90 degree angle, so they form a perfect um, L-shaped angle, or you could say a perfect T-shape, if you put the two lines together. And so, um, if the product of the slopes of two lines is negative 1, then we know these two lines are perpendicular. So note that the product will be negative 1 whenever the two slopes are opposite reciprocals of each other, which means they have opposite sign and they are reciprocals of each other. It's also true that any horizontal line is perpendicular to any vertical line. Okay, so let's determine whether these two lines are perpendicular. So we find the slope of L1 by plugging the coordinates in, and we end up with a slope of 2 thirds. We do the same for L2, and we get a slope of 3 halves. Well, 2 thirds times 3 halves is 1, not negative 1. So these two lines are not perpendicular.